All right. Hi, guys. How's it going? Not oh, bad. come on, make a bit, like, bit of energy. Like come on. Woo! Or woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. There you go. All right, we just wanted a round of applause, so we're going to yeah. go now. Well, that was go. cool. Thanks Thank for you. that. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, so we've all, we're all gathered here today. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I uh, had too many weddings last year. Um, we're going to be breaking down some of the songs from Alchemy, our latest mm. album in uh, Rack Studios, which is a very legendary studio. You should definitely go and check out some of the records that have been recorded here mm -hmm. over the years, because you will find Caracal by Disclosure was made here. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, big, big vibes. Who else you got here? Huh? Who else you got here? It's like, well, Sam Smith's Yeah, Radiohead, uh, Adele. Radiohead. It's uh, like Hot Chocolate. That was a big one for Oh, me. yeah, that's like, true. You yeah. sexy thing. Like, that's mm -hmm. here. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Mickey was the, the guy who set it up was the animals. Yeah, of course. So okay. House the Rising Sun, yeah. right? that vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it goes way back. And uh, we like it here because it's very near Abbey Road, but it's so different. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you are lucky enough to get to work at these studios, Abbey Road is always so many tourists outside taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit strange. Um, and there are, like, tours going through it while you're working. Whereas here, everyone's like... What's that place again? Like, but everyone knows it's still really great, mm. and yeah, we prefer it. It's a bit more homely vibes. So we've had some good times here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sam's albums were made here. Jimmy used to rent room four all the time. So yeah, good to be back here. But we've never done this before. So yeah, I've uh, never seen an audience in here. This is cool. Nah, yeah, yeah, this is great. So good to have you all here, and especially doing it all through the uh, the Discord as well. It's uh, doing what it should do. Yeah, these are the real fans Br <laughs> bringing yeah. us together. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start um, by looking at the first song on the record, Looking for Love, um, mm. which was one of the first songs that I worked on of the demos that Howard sent me. Um, we're going to look at the project, mm. <clears throat> which is here. We're going to just basically do what we used to do on Twitch, get all nerdy with it, ask some questions whenever you guys want to, just raise your hand. Say your names, well, I think, when you do it. Otherwise, it's like, who are we talking to? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we'll go through a bit of detail. We'll try and play some of the parts live because I think it could be quite fun. So try. So we, we'll yeah, try. Yeah, we brought a few instruments in. Yeah. I know, good luck with that bass line, bro. Yeah, it's, it's going to go wrong, but that, <laughs> that, that'll be fun. <laughs> we'll film know? it go wrong. <laughs> um, and yeah, we've got the real tapestry up there, which was the artwork for, for the record. Mm -hmm. Hello, guys. Welcome. Hi, hi. No, no, you're good. We just hey. started. Welcome. Um, so have a look at that. There's going to be pizza. There's going to be water. Mm -hmm. So help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> if we that really knew what we were doing, we would have put like the disclosure face on the pizzas. Yeah. That would have been a touch. Wow. Well, my oh. Next time. That's maybe. high level. <laughs> yeah, we're on the water instead. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think what we should do is um, we should listen to a bit of Looking for Love. Um, I've just done the extended mix, so we could blast that. I'll probably skip from the start. The extended bit. To the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, the extensions <laughs> are at the end, and you all know the rest of it. And I'd like to actually play the demo as well. So, yeah, I'll just give you a quick blast of all of it. So, here's a bit of uh, Looking for Love. It's pre master, so it's a little quiet. Have you heard this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I sent it to you yesterday. yesterday. I literally made this yesterday, so, yeah. This is the bit in the cafe. <laughs> Looking for love, so I see body right now. I got this hole in the 
Let's hear the, the new bit, whatever that is at the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you can actually put it in your mix. You don't just get cut off before you can mix into the next tune, which is always good. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's extended all right. That thing is extended. Just man. needed, you know, just did what needed to be done. All right, do you want to hear where we started? Because there's a bit of a stark right, difference. Okay, yeah. You know what though, I would say of all the demos, this is the one that maintained its true self. Yeah. Yeah, but this is the least embarrassing. It's, yeah, of the it's demos. the least changed. Yeah, yeah. Some of the others are really progressively different. worse as we go. Yeah, we'll play you some. We've got them all in one folder here, like brown eyes go this and this. But um, yeah, here's here's looking for love. Like I just loved it as it was, so I didn't need to do much. The bass drum. It's a heavy kick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so loud. It's, it's an slaps. outrageously loud snare. Yeah, it's, it's insane, yeah. And you sound like you're in the toilet next door. I probably was, man. <laughs> I, like, I clicked record on the laptop and I wandered around. So I was probably in the kitchen or something. Vocoder's not bad. Vocoder made it, yeah. Yeah. That's what I love the most is like the, the little fake out. Doom, doom, the drum. Yeah. yeah, all the parts are there. Even the drums, like, I didn't take, I don't think I took any drums out. I just added, just mm. layered it up. Yeah. The bass is still the same take as well. Is it? Yeah, you never redid the bass. Jesus, so. I'm so sorry about that. That's uh, had a you're, nightmare. You're fine, mate, you're fine. <laughs> all right, yeah, so here we go. So I think I got the, I got the project file, yeah. It wasn't from the stems. So um, Howard's friends, Max and Donnie, mm. were, were there at the beginning. Yeah, so. basically. So I had like the, I had a vague idea for that first melody. Da, 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 and I just didn't know what I was going to do with it. Um, so I turned up at the studio with my friends, Max and Donnie, who recorded all these demos with me. Terribly, by the sounds of it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no that nice. one was probably my fault. Um, and yeah, th I just asked them to make like super basic beats, like just kicks and snares, 4-4, four, four, and just like, here's the tempo. And then I'd start playing in chords and a bass line, and they would just generally like tell me if it was shit. And um, they didn't for this one, so that was a good start. And uh, I think I wrote this mainly in one day, except for the lyrics, which were like way later. Um, and did you write all the chords there with them, or did you yeah. have them in mind? For well, like I think I had like the basic chords. Um, you gotta take the mic with you. I'm not professional anymore. Um, yeah, so I just had like, but I didn't have all the movements that were happening, but I had like, I had that, but I didn't have all the bum bum bum. And what chords um, are those roughly, oh if you right. even know? Uh, someone's gonna have to help me out. That's like Come on, that's the perfect pitch. B flat seven minor, then B major seven, I guess, with a sus. And then, I don't know what this one is. E, e, e in the, the bass. bass. It's basically like a, it's a B major seven over, over e, an E. Whatever that is. And then, which is just E flat minor. Um, 
So it's super chromatic. Both of them are like. Two yeah. Well, bass. what I liked about it was the movement of the bass, because mm -hmm. the bass kind of makes all those make sense in my head yeah. anyway. Um, it's actually so, yeah. quite a lot of what I love, like major, minor, major, minor, major, yeah. minor. Yeah. Well, if you looked at the like just the bass notes of the chords are weird as hell. It's like. <laughs> yeah. And then. The it's like that's that's gonna be hard to write some chords over. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just what came out. I was hearing it over and over in my head, just generally. Because when you around. do like major minor chromatic, you can almost stop anywhere on the as you go up or down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I love it when melodies work with that smoothly. Like if you just mm. go. <laughs> you know I, mean? I think I know what you mean. You yeah. Just keep going forever, and it's like, it, yeah, it's sort of key changing. But if you, I don't know, if you man, throw them yeah. in the middle of the bar, sometimes that can be really sweet. It, I, it feels to me. I don't know much about music theory, but it feels like there's something weird going on with that tune, because I noticed this note kept wanting to come out on the B chord. I wanted to have that note in it, which is like a flat five. That's all I know it is. But like, I couldn't stop doing that note in stuff, and that told me like this must be some weird shit that I don't understand um, and I still don't so what do you mean could someone call Jacob Collier and oh, ask him right, what right. that means <laughs> what that okay, I see, yeah I see. Um, so yeah some weird harmony and the chords felt strange because I just played them in exactly like that like just kind of block chords and I started trying to write to that and it wasn't really working so then I did the bass line um, which then reinformed the chords and that's why they move so much like the mm -hmm. boom 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 booms um, so yeah, it's a bit of a stegosaurus of writing, and then the vocal melody came last um, in full because I kept retrying it, and like I was really happy with the first half, and then the second half would piss me off, and then I changed that, and, and it was one of those. But um, that first mm. bit never changed. The da 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 was just always there, um, and it was always looking for love. Like even before I decided that was the lyric, I was just singing "Looking for Love." So I was like, I need to work out what that means. Um, and even in the demo, you've got the sort of formatted idea of yeah, yeah. having the everything sounding mm. Mm, very down. Yeah, this was the second thing I started for the album, I think. Brown Eyes was first, weirdly. It was a weird tune. Um, and that one was formatted down. Was it? Um, no, no, that no, it wasn't. The so this is the first one we did that we tried. Go the distance down. and Brown Eyes, you sound more like you. Yeah. It's still a bit. So yeah, I think this was the one because it's in a bad key for me to sing. I was like, I'm going to put it up a few, and then well, what we would what down. you would do right is you'd vary speed, yeah, at nine percent, yeah, nine up, yeah, record but, but, there, but not change the pitch. So you'd still be singing in the same. No, no, you do change the pitch. You don't change the speed. So you vary ah. speed up nine percent, and then I put the, the and tempo then change the down tempo nine BPM. <laughs> Record and then put the tempo back up and the various speed back down and what you end up with is yeah <laughs> yeah yeah somehow nice <laughs> yeah it's uh, you know similar to recording onto a tape machine running at high or a lower speed so yeah. when you go back to where you were the thing you just recorded is now changed it's weird man like I spent the whole album writing process doing that like pretty much yeah. every demo I'd be recording up nine percent for some reason and my laptop can't do it anymore. I tried to do it the other day, and it's just like I can't. It do just it. CPU's it's like out. It's yeah, too much. No, I don't think I could. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't press play on this with that turned on. Yeah. it would just crash straight away. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's tough. it's something to do at the start when you first yeah. get the idea going. Yeah, it always remind that vocal tone always reminds me of um, like Strawberry Fields by the Beatles because they did it ev an even bolder move. They had the whole song finished, and then in mastering, they were like, "Can you just slow down the tape, the whole song?" Oh wow, and like, that sounds that. better. That's why yeah. he sounds like I am here. Oh yeah. Oh, that's that's what um what am I thinking of? Strawberry Hills. Does he sound pitched down? In Listen that? to like the foreman of John's voice okay. in that song, and you're like, oh, the whole thing is uh that's is cool. slow. Yeah. yeah and they just that. did it with the whole tape uh, in mastering. It's a yeah. pretty bold move. But you know, that's they were experimenting mm. at that time, weren't they? Anything else you want to say about the demo times? The is the bass line the same in the demo? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never changed the bass, I'm pretty sure. I definitely processed the hell out of it, though. Yeah, it Did you just DI it into, <laughs> into the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're talking, like, the most basic stuff you can possibly do. And so what bass is it? Just whatever Donnie's bass is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a precision. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a 
Different tune. Yeah, yeah. Drop D. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah. Yeah, it's always been that. But the bit that I heard in my head is that. Yeah. That was always going around the whole time I was writing it. Um, and then the rest I just kind of just filled in the gap. Yeah, a lot of your bass lines on this album were very syncopated. With the, they were very on the beat. A lot of times Howard will send me like a lot of push stuff, but a lot of this was just like... I think it's trancy. that rhythm that bum, dum, dum, is because that's what I play on guitar. I think these chords probably oh, started yeah. on guitar one time, like a long time ago. I don't remember it though. Yeah. That's, that's like that's the rhythm I'd always do. Bum, um, um, yeah, on guitar. Yeah. yeah. That's what's so fun about getting your demos because yeah, you, you wouldn't draw that in. You would write mm. it on guitar. And then you just decide, yeah. it's dance music, we're not doing that, we're gonna change it again. Mm. It's loads of transformation. Yeah, here's the bass, we'll start with the bass. You've got this little accent bit as well. <laughs> yeah, but well it's like, I don't know why I didn't go ba, ba, da, 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 at the end. Um, but yeah. that, da, 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 da. It's stuff like that, like because that's what informed the tune. Like that's what was in my head the whole time. I was like, we need to emphasize that bit because it seems important mm. for whatever reason. Um, that was like one of the last things we added. Like yeah, we were about it wasn't to send enough, it. Like we were, I was hearing it as how it yeah. was, and I was like, I can barely hear the bass. Didn't, there wasn't enough like upper harmonics, but we d it didn't need it in the whole bass line. Mm. Just that one phrase. Yeah. So we just put in a little. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of processing going on with that. Need yeah, to take that's it off. a hell of a lot. Clicky. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we didn't re-record it. You know, yeah. the magic was there. So put it through a little bass amp simulator. Just made it sound like a real bass. And I just wanted it to not have any high end at all. I just wanted it to just be under there because there's so many stabby synths mm -hmm. already going on. The vocal's quite busy. The drums are really skippy. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's nothing needs to be in the highs. So just compressed it. Oh, that's literally doing nothing. Uh, bit of pull tech, boosting the lows. This thing I love, I don't use that much anymore, but oh, yeah. Surfer EQ is awesome, yeah. Because it's like you're EQing the notes and it moves around, like, see that? Yeah. That's crazy. It's more like you're changing the tone of the bass rather than the, uh, the EQ. It's nuts how much has to be done to my bass playing to make it sound. <laughs> like not only has Guy done like nine different plugins, but Max and Donnie already comped it at this point. Yeah. This is probably a comp to oh, bass. No, no, I comped it again. You comped hard. it again. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, there's the the old ones there. And I like yeah. bounced that in place. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> loads going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, we, my final takes are more suggestions. We They're got like, you there. Maybe like that. <laughs> <laughs> we got you there, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else is there? of that oh and then two decimorts because i really wanted this whole album to have a real like 2000s house feel mm. to it where people were still putting stuff through samplers and you were getting all that kind of bit crushy mm. end to it like i'm trying to think of tunes alan brax mm. uh michael gray you know the weekend th that those sort of tunes where there would always be a buzzy going mm. on somewhere well i didn't know it at the time but subconsciously this tune was fully influenced by george michael um, that mm. tune, amazing. I posted about it the other da, day. Da, 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 It's yeah. the same tempo, it's the same sort of vibe and everything. And like his melodies in that tune are ridiculous yeah. as well. So yeah, I didn't know. I wasn't consciously copying him, but if you're going to copy co someone, pretty good person. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good person. <laughs> There's a lot of George Michael <laughs> yeah. influence on this record. Even like two of the demos that didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they sound like George Super Michael tunes. Super George Michael vibes. Yeah, yeah we'll just, play those later. But yeah, so this is doing all that kind of nice. That stuff. That's obviously extreme, but. And that's it. That's the bass. Mm. Kind of does the same thing the whole way through. There's no other section. Um, when there is, it just is has no bass. So. Yeah, yeah. Those are the other bit. Yeah, I love I love that bass line. It's yeah, we we, we didn't have the middle eight for this tune until like way after we had demoed it and everything. Like I wrote the middle eight with you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, here. Yeah, well, it existed, but without any lyrics and words. So that whole, like, need you bit and the, oh, you, that was all. Yeah, the uh, melodies and everything. I think we wrote it here and we re-recorded it at In Jim, room Jimmy's. Four. Yeah. Yeah, it was here. Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah, we were like, maybe we should do different chords because it's a middle eight and that's what people do. But these chords are so weird that I just thought that's enough. I don't want to add yeah, anything It was too chordy. Yeah, it's enough yeah. chords, man. Um, it just so had to did a truckload of harmonies instead. <laughs> <laughs> a truckload, yeah. And then I wrote that bit at the end, which is rare. The... Yeah, yeah. That was going around in my head. We'll get there. Let's have a look at mm -hmm. the drums. So the there's a lot of audio in this, which is rare for me. I usually do MIDI everything, but that's because I was given the the project file from Howard, and they'd already sort of bounced a lot of stuff in place. So all these kicks and rim shots and this sort of stuff that was already there. Hi hats. Yeah, I like that little tom and the. I think I added that. Did you? I thought yeah. that was there. Yeah. The rhythm of it was there, but it wasn't going. Right. Just right. used the little logic auto filter. It was like that. That before. Mm. Yeah. It was kind of a bit too busy. Yeah. I'm still pretty much using the same stuff that you've all seen me use on Twitch, though. Like, Big Kick is doing a lot of kick drums on this record. Kick 2 as well. That thing's on there a lot. Beefy. Heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Crispy hats. Oh, I like this loop here. You've got like weird shaker from. Is that from Max and Donnie? That's definitely from you guys, yeah. Huh. And then. It's cool. Cheesy little triangles. Just tiny little sprinkles, yeah. Because it was already quite busy, and like I said, I just wanted to layer it mostly for clarity. Mm. It was pretty, yeah, dead sounding. It was all there, like the rhythm and the beat. Just mm. didn't have like a lot of. <sighs> How much faster is it. this than the demo? It's the same. Oh. One, three, five. Yeah, this album's fast. Yeah, it's pretty quick. I don't know what that is. You guys finding that at the moment, where like all dance music just sounds a bit slow, like older dance music. You're like, yeah. I need to speed this up. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Like, yeah. That didn't used to feel that way. Like I used to listen to old garage tunes and be like, these are pretty quick, man. And now I hear them and I'm like, can someone speed these up? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's so strange. Don't know what happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like, we're making house at drum and bass speeds now. I mean, yeah, I've, I've been <laughs> making beats this week at 155 BPM. And but it's still just floor. garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've lost my mind. <laughs> Here's some cool risery stuff. Did a lot of this on um, my monotribe, like monotrons, like little LFO dub siren thing that I love. I think that's actually like your primary instrument. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's why, yeah, yeah. yeah. The melotron. I don't play drums anymore. I play the monotron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that thing. Whoa. Wow. Nice. Exceptional playing from me there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, not much to say about the drums, really. I mean, it's um, the processing is where a lot of it's getting sort of fattened up. I'm still using the same old uh, compressor. I did use this quite a lot on this record, though, that new Waves. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's just like really simple. I love any plugin that's just like turn a knob and you hear it. What does it do? I don't want like graphs and numbers and stuff. I just want to go, eh. No. Yeah, it yeah. sounds good. It sounds like one I could yeah. use. What does it do? You would like this, yeah. yeah. Be Beauty and Beast. So be they're both distortion. Beauty is even. Perfect. Well, yeah. Be Beauty is even harmonics and Beast is odd harmonics. Okay, cool. That's it. You nice. can just combine them. Or Beast. it might be the other way around. Surely. There might be some other, yeah, feedbacky stuff going on. It's I think such it's a odd. mythological plugin. I love it. It's amazing. I'm pretty sure it's even and odd. Yeah, like tape and tube. It's that sort of vibe. But there might be other stuff going on under the hood. But I think I bypassed this actually anyway on this tune. But it did, it is on quite a lot of it. I think mm. I got, I was getting a bit bored of Saturn, even though it is better. Uh, so I just used that. You know, when you sometimes just psychologically put a new plugin on, you're like, oh, that's better because it's new. But then you go back to the old one you've been using for years. And you're like, mm, mm. that probably was better, actually. <laughs> Let's go back mm. to that. So yeah, a bit of Suv as well. A lot of, oh. Yeah, taking out some low mids. A little bit of limiting. Yeah, that's about it for the drums. Here's a little before and after. It just sounds a bit like a bit clunkier. It's not doing much though, to be honest. It's light. Yeah. 
it's like adding 10%, you know, 10, 15%. A little bit bouncier. A little bit bouncier. Quite, hang on, we've got to get the mic. We'll oh do yeah. some questions at this point. Good thing. Hands up guy. for a few seconds before the mic arrives. Yeah. We're going to refer to Guy as Professor Gee today. <laughs> 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 Professor Gee. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, we're not live. Are we live? Check one, two. Anyone in the control room listening? Yeah. One, yeah, two, yeah. one, two. One, two, one, two. What there there he is. Go for it, bro. Hey. Um, yeah, I was going to say my name. I'm Ethan. Um, yeah. I was going to say, how do you stop it from stacking up in volume on the drum bus? Because I find when I... Like gain staging. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, most of these plugins have a gain like output option, some of them before and after the processing. So I just really pay attention on making sure that like it's hitting the same after each plugin and just do it manually as I go. Because if you whack a compressor on and then do like way too much makeup gain, you're like, that compression sounds awesome. But then you're like, if you actually match the gain, you might realize that it's peaking way higher because those transients, but it's actually sounding quieter. Mm. So I try and make the gain staging very true to like what the processing does. That's why I love plugins that like, you know, there's some of them, you have a button uh, like a decapitator or something with auto. So as you turn up the distortion, it turns itself down. So you can actually hear what it's doing, yeah. Because otherwise more distortion just sounds bigger and bigger and greater and mm. greater. Mm. You're not really hearing like what it's affecting. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this wet and dry knob always helps as well. I wish all plugins should have that, you know, just on and off, on and off. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you'll see it doesn't change much. I like my drum bus to hit around eight, like eight BPMs, eight BPM, eight decibels. So we're at seven there. Yeah, like even with this plugin, you know, it's like I'm going in, I'm boosting on the way in, but I'm taking out more. So it's the same, mm. it's balancing. The effect's being added, but the gain is the same. So yeah, we're hitting around eight now. Saturn, Saturn does do that. Saturn sort of turns itself down as you turn it up. You know what I mean? So if you crank it, all you hear is the distortion. Like it's gone up a bit, but it's that should be like twice as loud at least by that point. So yeah, I like plugins that do that. And Fab Filter stuff is really good for that. Even with Pro L, you can do like the one for one mode. Yeah. And you can really hear like, ah, oh, there's the limiting coming in now, not just louder and louder. Yeah. Yeah. Suv doesn't really do anything in that respect. But yeah, limiting as well. I'm, I am limiting the drums, but I'm taking out eight decibels. So we're ending up at eight. Eight is like my, I know where everything's at. If my drum bus is hitting at eight. I know like my bass is roughly going to be at 10. Everything else is more than to taste. But you're going to be going into your output track with loads of headroom. You know, If your drum bus is hitting at zero, you're like already going to have issues <laughs> as soon as something else happens at the same time as it. You know, you're in the red. So Welcome to my world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not wrong. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know. But these, these types of songs I, I always find as well. If you've got a big lead vocal, it's got to be clean. Otherwise, all the instruments are going to be pumping the vocal mm. with distortion. You don't want that. I mean, I don't want that. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you're not distorting from the first beat, it's not a hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, there, we go. there we go. I like lots of headroom. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anytime. Cheers, Ethan. So here's some of the some of the synths. I'm very proud to say that there's a Juno and then the Logic FM synth. And like that, can we be clear? You can hear it way more than the Juno. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Juno is subtle, but uh, there's a lot a lot of Logic synths on mm. this album because I think in interviews and on Twitch we've said so many times, oh, we just used the. Uh, Logic ESP for this massive song. Mm. And then you guys are all like, wow, that's cool. And then we're like, why don't we do that anymore? We should get I, back to I that. I still and do. You still do. Yeah. So here's mm. the demos, and mm. they just stay as demos now. And that's the main sound. Is that? <laughs> it's like Windows 98. Mm. You know? Let's take all those off. How's that sound? See it doing some automation. what you've all been hearing. I think it's a nice sounding synth, yeah. If you I think it looks like the period of time you were talking about earlier. It looks like the 2000s. early 2000s yeah, sort yeah. of vibe. It's got what it, it's like you could put this on on CD. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
Really? We should have released it CD only. I can't make it bigger. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Massive. Even more pixels. Wait, it's so blurry, yeah. Sick. Yeah, it's a weird synth. I don't know much about FM synthesis, so there's not a lot of, like overlapping going on. I think it's all about layering waveforms and stuff, right? It's doing one on each side, but mm. it does make a dramatic difference if you... Jesus. Mental, like, whoa, yeah. I remember like before... Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. I remember before I discovered what chorus was, I discovered stereo detune and I thought, Similar, yeah. Well, it's basically it is the chorus. same, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking for that knob on every synth, like, why do none of these have stereo detune? And yeah. then someone told me, and I was like, right. Yeah. Put that it's on, chorus. Yeah. Chorus, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, bit of logic, bit crusher. I think that was probably already there. Again, just trying to get that MPC sample -y kind of vibe. Uh, and then, what's this doing? Oh, more bit crushing, but I love this bit crusher, because you can make it move around in like a fluid, free way. Let me boost it and you'll hear what I mean. I love randomness, you know, that sort of thing. Mm. If, especially if you've got just a logic synth, you've got to then jazz it up a bit and make it sound a bit special or maybe like it might be a bit broken or the lead's not quite right and mm. just sound alive. That really helps, I find, a bit of drift and a bit of bit crushery moving around. I don't know what you call that. And then there's, whoa, okay. That was, that was already there. I didn't do that. Is that delay? Yeah. Yeah, and chorus. Oh, it's like, okay, yeah, that was Max and Donny. It is, it's two delay units on super short. So oh, they're, they're doing like chorus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like detuning it a bit. Stereo detuning. Stereo detuning, nice. yeah. Compression. Then that thing I was talking about. Love that. Yeah, and then a bit of that. Delay, reverb, and then it's being sent to some more Logic Chorus. That's the whole sound, a mm. little before and after. Yeah, just brings it to life. Oh, and it is actually going through all of these as well. That's a lot of, it's a lot of oh plugins. <laughs> yeah, that's EQ. Yeah, so what I've done there, so I've, I've got like... You've gone mental is what you've done there. Nah, it's nuts. perfectly necessary. That's all on that one synth, and then I've got like a synth bus, which has got these plugins on it. So that's affecting all the synths, mm. and that's affecting all the synths. So yeah, I kind of tr treat the synth bus as like a yeah, a sort of pre-mastering chain. You know, I'm what I want to treat the synths as an instrument, and just there's a lot of ducking there probably going on. That's why there's two compressors at the end, like they're not doing sidechain compression with the kick. Mm. One of them's the vocal pulling them all down a bit. So you don't have to do any automation. You know, it's like if he goes, I'm looking for love, it's going to go down 2 dB. And then if he stops, it'll just be back. Mm. And I like, I like doing it more with sidechain these days than I do with automation because it just gives, it fills in all the gaps and makes it sound really consistent and thick and almost like you put a transient master on the whole thing, you know, doing more sustain or something, just giving it more like body. So I got quite into that this time around. I even got into, this is expert level SUV, feeding soothe on the other instruments, the vocal. So you can, the v what's happening there? The vocal is pulling out the frequencies that it's taking up in the synths, so making space for itself. Yeah, yeah. So that's the synths what duck out the way of yeah. the vocal. Yeah, I watched a video of someone doing it, and I was like, oh, I've been looking for that for ages. It's, it's exactly track like spacer. Track Spacer, but I found that Track Spacer is very like wide with its choice of uh, what it's taking out. Whereas this, you can literally choose, right? With the sharpness knob, you can make it just do like a big old EQ bubble, or it can take out exactly where the frequencies are. So yeah, it's really good, I think, for vocals or guitars or something that you want to stick out in the mix, clarity-wise, but not have it louder, just mm. have space. And it's super subtle, but yeah, Suv is the best at that. Yeah, I love that one. Uh, what else? But yeah, this is Juno, square wavy. Thank you. 
Yeah, we got a question. Hey, okay, let's do that. Let's do a question. Question time. Check. Yeah. Okay, it's working. Um, <laughs> How are you, bro? I'm I'm all right, thanks. Um, yeah. I'm Eric. Uh, Hi, Eric. I uh, I just what you were saying about the sort of like the automation with the bit crushing effect. It reminded yeah. me of like because I don't own things like like that plugin. Mm. Um, I sometimes find workarounds like with. Uh, FastFX, I think it's called, or what was it called? With Logic. Yeah. FastFX, lo yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah totally. So there's like, you can do LFOs and like randomize, yeah, random LFOs or whatever on um, mm -hmm. like a, well, bit crushing effect on that. So I found if you do like, if you randomize it between like 2% and 1% or whatever, you can have this sort of really nice effect, stuff like that. So that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't use that one as much as uh, remix effects. But yeah, it's good for randomness. Yeah, kind of character exactly. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah and, that one uh, go to. And also, yeah, I really like the Logic FM synth. So very underrated. Yeah. <laughs> I was Not really more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was really amazed when um, you. I discovered you used it on Latch, right? It would either be that or the ESP. Yeah. It was ESP. Probably ESP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. One yeah. of the two. Mm. I mean, ESP is like the uh, the Juno copy, isn't it? The mm. Logic Juno. It is a Juno. It is a Juno, and then the. The FM synth is, yeah, I don't know what it would be a copy of, but mm. yeah. this is a different type of synthesis, isn't it? One's yeah. sawtooths and squares, one's mm. FM frequency modulation. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. I feel like that sound is very uh, corgy to me. Like yeah. It's like mm -hmm. 80s yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of. Like, I hear yeah. That. It's yeah. like so, a micro corg thing. Yeah, mm. so I sort of like, um, I've used that myself for like nice ambient leaning yeah, sort of sound. Nice. So, yeah. Definitely a fair way of doing it. I <laughs> agree. Bit different, but anyway. <laughs> nice one, bro. Thanks. Um, this is Juno 106, doing its nice. It's just backing up the main synth, really. I just felt it was a bit empty without it. I can take it out. It's, I don't know. It's very subtle, but. Mm. Yeah, it definitely adds something. Yeah. It's just. And you, you would have fed that from the MIDI into the Juno, right? Because I didn't mm -hmm. play those. Yeah. Yeah, Because yeah. I can't. And it goes, and, uh, and I had like, uh, it was going through some distortion effects too. So that's built into the waveform. So I kind of committed to it yeah. sounding like this. Growly. Mm. Yeah, that's in like, you know, the biggest part of the tune where mm. everything swells and... Yeah, you can really hear it there, actually, doing more of its square wavy thing. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, this uh, the Arturia DX7, that's doing all of the um, kind of swirly behind the scenes. Don't really notice it, but you miss it when it's gone kind of sound. I love sounds like that, where you're really only focusing on that FM synth doing the plucks, but you just need all that like stereo, wishy-washy stuff to make it complete. So yeah, that's happening. That's happening quite a lot throughout the track. Ugh, a lot of automation on there, these tunes. <laughs> it's that's time on like, this, man. <laughs> that's pretty normal for a disclosure tune. Yeah, they always look like that. I like putting it all in one window, and it makes it look absolutely <laughs> mental. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, yeah, let's. That would be a terrible tube map. <laughs> Where are you going? Yes, yeah, so that's. I don't have a real DX7, so mm. I had to use the Arturia one for that. Guy decided to put that. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I think it just required. I like a, it. A bend. Yeah, yeah. I like the bend. It just needed it. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. You know, it was um, derived from was we were talking about Coldplay, who oh, also yeah. recorded here loads actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, Parachutes was done in this room. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, mm. in, yeah, is it Spies? There's a t ton of like metal guitar finger mm, yeah. on that album. Dun, dun, no, it's not, it's Trouble. Yeah, it's Trouble, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And then he goes, Wee! Nice. Every, every yeah. phrase, yeah. I remember not being allowed in this side of the building when they were here. And I thought, oh, yeah, ah. lockdown. They, yeah. they, uh, they rent every room when they're here and they just use one room. Yeah. One time yeah. they were doing the Game of Thrones <laughs> soundtrack and Coldplay were here and I was like, come on, I'm yeah. going to go there. I would like to have seen that, yeah. yeah. 
So that's uh, the DX7, Juno, FM. What's this Poly 6 doing? It's got one appearance. It must be good. It must be so good. What is going on here? (laughs) Why is that there? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it had something to do with this ARP, right? I think I recorded this ARP through a real... Yeah. So that, that last note was in there, and I loved how it en- ended on that note, but in the mix, it didn't stick out enough. So I just oh. put that one note through another synth, just to exa- like exaggerate it. Yeah. I just It was an unusual note to end on for that time. Yeah. You can hear it, fair play, yeah. <laughs> Also, you'd done all the chords, so I was like, you gotta I get will one add note. one note yeah. to the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. Good work. Great choice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we have a lead synth on here at times. Mm. I think it only ha- yeah, happens a couple of times. Nice little belly thing. Dun, dun. Yeah. I love this bit. You wrote that. I think I, I did write that. that. Just them, da, 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 oh, that's some, that was cool. Ah, uh, some like. Wow. Yeah. I never knew that was there. Exactly. That's why it's like, it takes 40 minutes to do that. And then not one person not even listening me. to the album yeah. has <laughs> ever noticed it's there. But it makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. What are all those? Oh, it's Vital. I mean, yeah. You guys use Vital. That's a great synth. Sounds you, important. That's your main thing, is it? Yeah. Everything's free. Right? Everything you just drag into it's free, which I love, yeah. Mm. Love a bit of vital. Yeah. I mean I can't make as crazy sounds as you do. You're is that where you make all your bass lines? Mate, you need to send me a sample pack of uh <laughs> I I need to make a <laughs> bass soon. It's vital. It says it on the pin. It's vital. Get that. That's doing something and what's Bendy synth? Oh, it's another DX seven. Yeah, there you go. Vital. Just a little Yeah. And the X7 is such a good synth. <laughs> Super bendy. It's like spending, <laughs> spends more time bending than yeah, it does actually. Exactly. On the Layered into the others, all it does is detune the other yeah, two. Yeah. That's why I liked it. It did sound a bit yeah, West yeah. Coast, that synth, yeah. String notes. That's not real strings, but we'll just pretend it is. Is that yeah. what it does? Th- we did those. Uh, and then it does a little. Yeah. I think that's all the synths. So yeah, all together they uh they're not going through a lot of processing, just a bit of that's actually just for automation. That's not on the whole lot. It comes in and out like mm. Yeah, if I wanted to take it to the extreme. Mm. I think I've shown you this already, yeah. EQ. Some other clever tricks with the vocal. That's the synths. Any synthy questions? Anything else about the chords, harmony? Yeah, I should probably talk about the chords because I like that's quite an unusual process for me. Is I'll write like basic versions of the chords I want, and then I'll put them in, and then fiddle with them and like change them, and usually ends up being something I then can't play afterwards because there's like either too many notes or like I'm yeah. just not good enough. <laughs> and um, and but to be honest, like. I actually prefer writing in Logic. Like I prefer just moving the notes around on the screen than I do writing piano because I feel like I have habits on the piano where like my hands will just land on chords I know. Whereas with that, it's like it's no matter how long you look at it, you can't really tell what note you're on. So you just listen, you know, unless you like line it up with the edge where the little keyboard bit is. Like, oh yeah. Um, yeah, like you know, if you're looking at one on the right hand side of that screen, it's pretty tough to tell what note you're on. And so you end up just using your ears a lot more. Um, and what I wanted with this particular tune harmonically was it to just always be moving. Like even if you're sat on the same bass note, I wanted a slightly different inversion or like just a lead note move or something like oh that. Oh yeah, um, I didn't notice that. It's yeah, not like every single chord, but like nearly really all of them are there, moving. Yeah. yeah, there's always something changing. Um, even there, you just like dropped that note for that one. Yeah, I don't even <laughs> think that works like technically, but I like how it sounds. <laughs> what, that note? <laughs> the last one. It's the last one. <laughs> I don't know what note that is, but um, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's because it's the dissonant one from the first chord, but we're not on that chord, so I don't know what that means. 
It's no um, wrong notes, bro. But this is what I'm saying is like, I don't know what any of this stuff is. I'm not like writing chords like from some trained perspective. Um, like we did music at college, but like I don't really remember any of it. Um, and we did classical anyway, so it's not that applicable. It's like, yeah, okay, I could know we're on like the subdominant, but it doesn't help me write anything. Um, it's just more like I've got these bass notes and I know how I feel and like I'm going to keep changing the notes until it sounds like how I feel. And that's what this whole album was pretty much. Um, so yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, I've never seen Howard write so from like a perspective of getting feelings into the music. Mm. That's a bad way of saying it, but... Yeah, he really, I don't think you would have had the opportunity to do that, especially in the second and third album, because you're just sort of thrown into a session with yeah. some yeah. artists and you're like, give me some chords, Howard. And it's like, okay, here's some chords. And these ones he spent so long on, like thinking about and yeah, checking they really resonated with you, right? And where yeah. you were at. It was like once I realized that was the deal and it's like, all right, I've actually got as long as I want to just work on these things. I was like, well, I'm going to make them as good as I can then. And then once I like said that to myself, I was like, they need to be fucking good. If I'm gonna like leave it yeah. thinking I just did as good as I can, I'm not getting up until they're like pretty nice. And then at the same time as that, it was like, well, this album's sort of becoming about my experience of heartbreak and various other things. And so it's like, if I want it to reflect what I felt, what I felt was powerful. And so I need this to be powerful. And when you start like connecting those two things of like what I'm making here needs to represent something that means a lot to me you put so much more effort into the thing because otherwise you're like you're doing yourself an injustice and i'm like well i'm definitely not going to do that so i've probably spent like i don't know how many hours just on that one midi page of like yeah. just of looking at those chords i've probably changed them like a thousands of times um, that's what i want you to be doing yeah yeah it's what i'm doing so like when guys like understanding all these technical things the reason i'm not is because i'm just staring at that midi yeah. screen that's all i'm doing <laughs> just like moving notes like okay i'm going to move that one just like one semitone, and then I'm gonna live with that for yeah, like yeah. three hours. <laughs> and be like, does it still sound right? And it's like, no, move it back. Okay, great. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of uh, that trial would drive me mental, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm completely insane. I want the whole yeah. tune done in two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's the most enjoyable part for me. Yeah, the, exactly. the harmony. So that and then fiddling with the bass notes is uh, that's what I do it for. Yeah. And the and the harms. Oh yeah. I mean, when you t when you combine harm like vocals yeah, with yeah. harmony, you know, it's like that's how it's bad. That's the cherry on top. Yeah. Well, there's um, no harmonies in this tune, but it's all vocoder, yeah. so it's a very there. There is harmonies, like, but you know, nothing sung. Um, there are not many vocal harmonies on the album. Yeah. Which is weird. But a lot of vocoder. Yeah, it's just a lot of vocoder. It's fitted that kind of um, what's the tune I was referencing when this was coming together? Flawless. Absolutely uh, yeah, flawless. absolute. Yeah. The bit on the in the middle eight, I just have always felt like it, it is basically just flawless, like kind of a little bit. This bit. I'm to go, I it that bit or the this mm. bit, sorry. Yeah, with all of the need knees. Oh, no, that is kind of that song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but <laughs> like we did separate harmony for that as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's got a totally different part to the chords. Yeah, it's got like a B section vocoder. Yeah, yeah. I love at those. It. We spent a while on that. Yeah, so the the vocal is just a single vocal the whole way through, um, which I don't think we've ever done that before either. No, um, this has got this is bounced down, but I'll show you the the one that had all of Howard's all the plugins on, so we can sort of do a before and after. Good luck, CPU. So we have. I'm looking for love from everybody right now. I got this hole here in my heart. Oh yeah, I need to put that on. Okay, so that's after. Here we go. It's a, the, probably the biggest jump. I'm looking for love from everybody right now. I got this hole here in my heart. Where's the chorus coming from? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Could be anywhere. Let me hear it again. I'm looking for love from everybody right now. I yeah, I actually don't know where that's coming it, from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever. So anyway, yeah, there's to get his vocal there w was mostly just about clarity. It, it just sounded very a bit no highs and too much bass because it was formatted down by the very speed. Yeah, this has already been through that process of stretching and like not warping, but yeah, recording at a different speed, resulting in a different tone, mm -hmm. which is like Howard's character for the album, it's kind of how we were mm -hmm. thinking about it. Like, let's put him in a different 
frame and like a different sound and mm. one that sort of already sounds quite melancholic because the whole album lyrically is quite melancholic. So he should sound yeah. kind of down there and you know. But of. yeah, it's weird. I, I realized like a lot of people have this. I don't know if you guys, if you're men especially because of the break in the voice, if you're trying to like sing a melody to someone, you'll often be like, yeah, it goes like this da, 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 and you'll sing it high. I, I do that all the time, and so I'm way better at singing in falsetto than I am in my normal voice. So I was mm. like, I'd rather sing this high and then pitch it down, because then I can do, sing it how I mean it, rather than just like doing a half assed job in my actual voice. Um, right. So yeah. that's why the very speed thing came up. But then it did sort of become like a theme in the record, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so the main thing that's also giving it extra character is there's a lot of automation of like the format um, in this song and. I'm quite proud of this idea that I had, which was I'm going to try and I, I was listening to the lyrics and I was had this idea that I would format them down when they were very sad and he was going down. And then when they were more optimistic and hopeful, I'd format them up. So I was really trying to pay attention to like the meaning and the lyrics of the song and let the effects like follow that path, which is not something I've ever thought to do. It's a cool idea. When yeah, I'm, always, it, I'm yeah. always trying to find a way to like bring a bit more balance between like the production side of things and like the more romantic side mm. of the songwriting. Mm -hmm. And um, that was ha what I chose for this album. Um, so you can see that kind of going up and down. I'm looking for love from everybody right now. I got this hole here in my heart. So I got this hole here in my heart. It's like, oh, that's really sad, bro. We're going down and then. <laughs> I've been drowning at the bottom, like, I at, and I don't know how to come back up. I was like, well, he says up, so we're going, yeah, we're going yeah. back up. You're just fucking with us at this point. We're like, that's not positive. He's going up. No, it goes down. On don't the know, word don't up. Know. Yeah, but you don't know how to come back up. I know, it's just clever, man. You're, you're drowning, bro. You're so that. Yeah, yeah. Off we go. yeah, yeah. You, you get the vibe so there's a lot of that and it's not just let's stick an LFO on it and make it drift I really wanted to pay attention and be like how can we make the production glue in with the meaning Didn't, um, George Michael did a cover of that tune right of Flawless maybe this is such a George Michael album oh, what yeah. the hell that's weird I've, I'm, everything I do is a bit George Michael yeah we I can't help it love yeah, him yeah, yeah, yeah. obsessed yeah. okay so that's the main vocal um, it's it's bounced down to save on CPU and whatever. So yeah, that's feeding. Oh, and there's uh, there's this is interesting. There's whispers just to back it up. That's you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just so down the middle like mono vocal, and I just wanted that. But you know, you're lacking a lot of stereo. Mm. So sometimes whispers is a really good way of. Like uh, <laughs> filling that gap. Yeah, um, I remember I came into the studio. I was here in room four, and it was like we were going to write the middle eight or whatever. And I turned up, and I was like, <laughs> I think we need to put whispers in this tune. And I was like, we just did. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I spent all morning doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, I think it's a really nice way of you know, if you're in headphones, you really want that like all it the textures, wide, and, the yeah. Yeah. and it adds air as well. If the vocal's quite dead, you're also adding that nice like shiny mm. top end back in on the S's and the, the T's and whatever. So there's a bit of that going on. But yeah, the vocoder in this tune is all uh, voc vocal synth by Isotope. Uh, oh, we got a little question? Yeah, let's oh, go. Hi. Yeah, that one, yeah. Go uh, for it, man. Hello. Hello. Uh, Yo. My name is Jan. Hey, Jan. Um, I got more a question to Howard. Uh, it's non-technical. You God. said, okay. <laughs> 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 but also to you guys, like uh, I'll just it's out. more about creative process. And you said that yeah. you just like move notes around. Yeah. And are you limiting yourself uh, when it's done? You know, like do how you know it's done. Um, oh, oh, as in because like it's like it's you can you you can like you know you can leave it for three hours and then just like decide yeah, yeah. it's not again and again and again for weeks. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it can be tough to know when to stop. Um, sometimes you know, and sometimes you have to just like essentially give up and just be like, that's the best <laughs> I can do. Um, but yeah, I don't know. For me, I have music going around in my head most of the time, and it tends to be whatever the last thing I listened to was, um, yeah. unless I haven't listened to something. But if I change it. And then I go away, like just I don't know, for a walk, which is often what I'll do to like take a little break or something. And then I come back. I'll like try and think like what's currently going around in my head, and if it's the new one or the old one. And then like whatever's stuck in my head, that's what I'll generally use. Um, I think like showers and stuff when you're not thinking are a really good time to like just check in. Like what is the tune going around in my head right now? Is it 
already a song or does it need to be written or is it the one I'm working on and that's where I beatbox all my beats as well as <coughs> yeah. in the shower showers yeah. and like stuff when you're running was big for me like every time oh, yeah, every morning yeah, running, I go for yeah, a run yeah. and when like my, stuff yeah. goes running when my head. mind goes off mm. I get the best ideas yeah exactly and then I forget about them but that's, yeah, that's yeah. another issue well, same, <laughs> man, same and so that's where like this yeah. is probably the thing I use the most to make tunes I just audio well yeah but yeah. when I run I would just stop every hundred meters yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I record something. <laughs> yeah. Out of breath. Yeah. Hard for song number 58. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I would just like sit outside, even like with friends, and you like sit outside and you're like smoking or something, and then like the, I hear it in my head and I'm like, oh fuck, and I don't want to be that guy who's like, I just got to record yeah, yeah. a memory real quick. <laughs> so I like go to the toilet, <laughs> and, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I've never seen you do that actually. Well, it's because I go to the loo. I'm uh, like, oh, I need the toilet. That's why you sound like you're <laughs> in the toilet and looking for love. Probably was. It was in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but are you are you changing melodies uh, while you guys both uh, working already on the song, or is it just like a, you did a melody and you just go with it? Yeah, no. I'll, I'll sometimes make changes afterwards, but usually I won't even show guy until I'm like ninety percent happy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I think with this album more than any, I was the most reserved of saying anything I've thought could be changed because it came from such a personal place and I knew how it, with the harmony, that's the most important thing to him. Mm -hmm. If we're writing a tune on the spot, like anyone can say anything about what anyone's up to, mm -hmm. you know, if uh, often I'll very much like that Howard and whoever the artist is to get there to like 90%. And it's almost like until we start recording and I hear it in the computer, like an, all going round, then I might literally be like the way the phrase signs off, I think is should be this. And then mm. if they're like, nah, I'm like, okay, you guys, that's mm. your thing. Mm. I'm happy to like concede it. But the important thing is like, definitely chime in. Everyone should be able to yeah, yeah, chime in sure. in the studio. And know? it's like, it's the same with production stuff. You know, like if guy's yeah. picking a sound and I don't like it, I'll let him like work on it for a while before I'm like, that sounds shit. Like yeah. I'll give him like 10, 15 minutes on it or something. And then if it still sounds mm -hmm. wrong to me, I'll like flag it and be like, yo, are you, you going to do something else yeah. to that? Or like, because it sounds well, shit. Well, the hardest thing with you is <laughs> that is like, you'll say what you don't like and I'll be like, oh, which part of the chain? You're like, no idea. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, just exactly. know what you want. But. Yeah, no, but usually for me, like, okay, if I don't like something guys doing, it's only ever because it's like, um, like with the chords, for example, some synths, if you play like a dense chord, like that with like quite a lot of notes, one, sometimes they just don't have enough notes. It's not like, hasn't got the polyphony to play them all and it ends up going like, instead of those ones. And then other times it's just like the sound he picks will EQ out that note. Oh yeah, that's right. The wrong yeah. chord, and I just notice things like that. But it's usually the taste thing we're pretty similar on. Yeah. Like I don't ever be like, oh, that sounds a shit sound. I think like right. what disclosure is is letting each other do what we're mm. like the best at, and just trusting the other person's got that yeah. right. And then like the end result is that process. Like when we both just go, my side of things is good, your side of things good. Mm -hmm. Like tick. Put it and out. that's I think that developed through doing sessions with loads of loads of artists. Mm -hmm. um, like one year we did like 200 sessions or something in a yeah that was ridiculous yeah. and um <laughs> and like we go there and it was just such clockwork between us you know but you're working with a completely new human being who's a totally separate artist and so they'll come with an idea and let's say it's like a vocal idea and it's like a really strong just melody with no harmony I'll be like, okay, I think the chords should be this. And I'll be like, okay, I think the beat should be this. And I'll be like, okay. And then that's it. And it's like, right, now just, just work on it and finish the song. And by the end of the day, you've got a fully finished song. And to me, that, I mean, it's amazing. And you can end up with amazing tunes. And I love doing it. But it's the opposite of spending days and days working on the chords. You know, you're like, okay, yeah. as fast as I can, what fits that? It's that. Okay, great. It's not this like, hmm, what do I actually want to say harmonically and like, is there something that's been going yeah. around in my head that I want to express? It's, it's none of that. It's just like panic. Try something. That'll do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the hit rate of that is low. You know, it's low. Yeah. You're not ever going to be, you're not regularly going to be super happy with what you did that day. Some mm -hmm. days you will like, and it will just be like, wow, that was, everyone was in sync that day. But yeah, this, 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 uh, this was just a different idea of how we were going to write this record. It was going to yeah. be a lot more. We were going to focus on the start of every song being extremely important and almost the end result being less important mm. and not spend months doing mixes and other stuff. I was like, I'm gonna use what I've learned by doing this for 10 years mm. and just feed those definitely great ideas that we love out through my like brain just for a few days and then it's that's it, it's done. Yeah, Whereas the improvising before it was, stuff that's like 
depth, empathi- improvising something deep is yeah. quite a low hit rate. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you can, I mean. it does happen, but like for me, even with the sessions that we've done where it does feel like I've just come in and just been like, how about these chords? Like, yeah. uh, like talk. <laughs> yeah. Like those chords, like I didn't just come in and play them. Like yeah, I worked them out in the morning ages. that day. Yeah. I'd been working on them for a while. Like I did that at Appian Way. Uh-huh. on the piano and then when you came in you were like can we have it in F and I was like thank fuck for that okay. <laughs> 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 yes. that works for me bro yeah yeah, yeah I think uh, you'll always be happy once you've turned up to the session with some chords yeah. and you're chords not always writing right. chords right you're not always inspired to write your best harmony so no, doing 200 sessions work. in a year is like pretty ambitious but with dance music and most pop music like you're writing around either a riff or like a chord sequence there's gonna be one of those two at least or if not both and so like if you're not making one that you really like you're gonna spend the whole day writing over something you don't really like and it's like yeah i personally think it's worth taking the time to get a bed of something that you love and then start writing a song um tend to get better shit that way Mm -hmm. i think just the vocoder, and that's the last thing, last piece of the puzzle. I don't think I can solo it without turning it down. There you go. Really chorusy. Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. play the bit in the middle eight with the separate MIDI? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's different vocals. Oh, you, that part. Without the lead, though, yeah. Oh. Mm. I don't know if it's going to let me, because I've got all this going on. Hang on. Just the vocoder, yeah. Trying. It comes in second time, you know. Mate, you know more than me. <laughs> mm. There you go. Yeah, that's the note I don't really understand. That was my idea. I'm pretty sure no, that's why you don't understand it. Uh, do you remember at the... Maybe we didn't do it here, but at the end of the tune, I was like, it needs to end on... Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, it's yeah. the same note. It's the same note, yeah. It's the same note. It's, it's just like... It sound, there. sounds weird about it. I'm so proud that of this one, note. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's my contribution to the harmony. And it didn't even play. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I, I, I just muted really, that because it because it, it um because it delays, and that's the end of the tune. I was like, that note is important because you're going to hear it like four more times. Mm. It's going to it's going to keep delaying as the tune ends. We're going to go. Yeah. No, 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 no. yeah, yeah. I wanted the no. to be the top note of not the top note, but for me, it's the one that I hear as the lead. Mm. So that's how it ends. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting. So th- this song is a standalone project, and all of the songs are standalone projects, and they just sort of end and begin. And then there's like a further project, which I'll, I'll probably open at the end, where all of the pre-masters live one after the other, and the album flows, and within like the take folder, you know, like that kind of thing, are all the interludes. So it was like uh, 11 projects within a project, um, with all of them, the ambient sounds and the field recordings and that kind of thing. I just didn't know how else to do it. I'd never done a continuous like flow album before, but I had laid out songs in a grid for mastering engineers because they, you don't think about this until you get there um, with your like first record, but they genuinely need to ask you how much silence do you want between each song? Do you, or do you just want the guy to just, you know, try their best and make it up but if you are, if you're precise about it and you have to give them timestamps and all this kind of thing so if you're doing a continuous flow album where you they're not mastering one wav you know you still want them to master each individual song you've got to give them the songs and the interludes sort of separate so they can treat them differently and it all gets quite complicated but i'll show you that project at the end because it's like the alchemy master project which is like i'm proud of in a nerdy way um, but yeah, all of the rest of the songs just look like our sort of classic template. Mm. One more thing you'll probably notice is my uh, like mastering chain is I've cut it way down. I'm like not using much now on the master out, just kind of letting it, letting it sing. I'm just doing a bit of that Oxford inflator. Suv is not even really on to be honest. It's kind of like just about touching it, and then a, a bit of that. So I've lost all my like tape. 
I've lost any, any EQ as well that I was doing. I would do it with this, but then I'd bypass it and I would show that to the mastering person mm. and just be like, here's what I sort of thought after listening to it for a few months. Um, what do you think? And I mean, in this one, I decided after months that I should take out half a decibel of bass. So I was like, it's already pretty, pretty there. Decibel. Yeah, I was like, that's, I think, what it needs. And I'm pretty sure he vetoed it. And he was like, why would you remove bass? <laughs> 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 I was like, that is a good point, Matt. Mm. I, fair enough, let's yeah. leave the bass in. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, it's much more minimal and clean because they, they have such amazing gear at all those mastering places. You know, it's like, they're going to do what we're trying to do here in plugins with incredible vintage equipment. So you can give, I think it's good to do it in plugins to get yourself a guide of how you want it to sound and then just show the person like a screenshot and be like, hey, here's what I thought. And they'll be like, okay, well, turn off your compressor because I've got like a fair child. Let's use that one. Like, cool. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm going with this record. It's very, very clean and just like loads of space for mastering. Yeah. All right, that's the end of the tune. So we've got a couple of questions and yeah, then we'll take a question quick time. break and uh, cool. get on to the next one. Hey, what's up, guys? Hello, um, how's it going? Yeah, good. First of all, congrats, amazing project. Thank, oh, you. thank um, you, man. This is not a technical question by any means, but just something that was playing on my mind. Yeah, sure. You, know, you talk about improvisation and low hit rates due to, let's say, time constraints, mm -hmm. uh, mm. pressure constraints in the studio. If you, when I'm thinking about success, how do you guys define that for a project or a song? Is it commercially? Is it uh, sonically? Mm. Is there room for both those things to exist? And what does that look like for both of you? That's a great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think they, there's room for both to exist. Mm. Yeah, like there are, there are songs where, um, obviously there are songs where the artist's really proud of them, but it flops. And it's like, well, that's a success because they wrote the song they meant, but it's not because financially it's not, or mm. something like that. But um, depends what your aims are, I think, to, to find success. you know. By definition, you have to know what you're aiming at, and so like, for us with this album, it it was just the first bit. You know, it was like, can we make an album that we're truly proud of, and like finish it? And f to us, it feels finished. So like, that's success. But if we were aiming at like number one album, it's like, well, we haven't done that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can look at the two different kinds of success. But for me, it is it is taking something that didn't exist and you hear it, and then manifesting that into reality, and like as accurately as you can without fucking it up, which is impossible. So you always fuck it up a bit. <laughs> but, but like as purely as you can, I think that's the musician's job, is to like get an idea out into the world um, as you hear it, and it's hard. Mm. And, and I can't remember who said it earlier, was it you? No, maybe you, saying that you forget ideas. It was you back there. Yeah, it's like I sometimes get like a sick idea in my head, and I'm like listening to it like it's in my headphones, and I'm like, this is a fucking banger. And then I go to the computer to try and make it. I'm like, I yeah. forgot it. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. It's just completely <laughs> forgot it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'd say similar. I think my definition of success changes like with age and mm. like per project as well, really. Because when you enter into a project, and if you if you're not just going to write it on the go, maybe you have some sort of idea. Like with this one, it's you know heartbreak and it's this and it's this um like not not really any part of me from the get-go was like a disclosure heartbreak album is going for like mega success um we were going more for for like and and we decided even before it was half done that we weren't going to tour it so in the music industry you know if you don't tour a record that's gonna be really hard to like we toured the hell out of our last records. Like we literally went and get, showed everyone, like, look at this. Like, put it on everyone's timelines as much yeah. as we could. Every festival, you know, this album, we were like, this is just for us. Like, yeah. we're having fun. We did 150 shows last year. Mm. We're knackered. Yeah. And this album honestly came out of nowhere. Like, we were thinking, year off, get back to it. Howard was so inspired that it was like, this has to be now. But we still can't go on tour because we're dead. So it's like this will be the album we don't tour or mm. delayed tour or something. So you have to already redefine, you know, mm. expectations and stuff like that. Because I had a moment like a month or I don't know, a couple of weeks before the album came out, <laughs> which actually like answered your question quite well, I think. So I was like deeply unsure about if the album was good or if like it would, I was like, maybe it's actually just so bad. He was, like, he was free. Yeah, out. yeah. I was like, like what if it's fully. just like really, really bad? <laughs> and because like, it's quite different to the other stuff we've done. Like, I'm singing a lot more than I usually would, and I just had a wobble. And uh, I, I called, think there's like, no features to hide. Behind there's no features either, to hide behind, you know, and it's all no about like helping. real <laughs> shit. Instead, it's none of it's hypothetical. It's all about stuff that actually happened, and it's like, 
that's nerve wracking, you know. And so I've never been nervous to put music out before. I've always just been like, I like it, let's put it out. This time I was like, oh shit. And so I called Guy and was like, oh, oh, uh -oh. We, maybe we should pull the album. It, what if it sucks? And um, Guy gave me this like sick pep talk where he was like, listen, man, we've tried our hardest to make the best thing we can make and we feel like we've finished it. And so either we put that out and like you get the scrutiny of either people like it or they don't, or you just don't put it out and never know the answer to that question. And I was like, yeah, a good point. You know, like that's the best we can do. Like, yeah, what else are we going to put out? Yeah, it's like we, we can just start <laughs> writing another one and like hope that it's better. Like, <laughs> I don't know, you might as well put it out and then also start writing another one. So I guess we'll do that. But um, you know, I think for, for me, that says it all. It's like, we're doing it for us. It's like, we've made the album we really wanted to make. There's no outside influence. There's no one saying like, please make them all heartbreak songs at 1.38. No one said that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we did that because that's how it felt. Um, and so to me, that's a success. Uh, before we even released it, it was like, we did it. We've made, we alchemized. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like doing much better now, which was also, I think through making this. Yeah. So definitely. that is success. <laughs> like watching your brother get a bit like a bit better and like healthier. Yeah, again. and like it's ch it's changed our relationship a lot. You mm. know, like we've definitely sunk even deeper and more comfortably into our roles of like Oh, I thought you were gonna say hating each other. <laughs> of hating each other. Yeah, yeah Roles yeah, of yeah. hating each other. Yeah, it's combat Got roles. It. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, so yeah. Appreciate I hope that answers it a bit. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, you guys yeah. should be proud. The fans are definitely proud and yeah, oh, thanks, thanks for the insights. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, I mean, we were actually they're doing this stuff is kind of awesome to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like going on tour is draining, and don't get me wrong, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. We've done it a lot. Never done this. Just always looking to do new experiences yeah, and yeah. like do fresh things. And this stuff's helpful as well. I so. walked here, man. That's nice. You can't do that on tour. No, yeah, I line biked. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that on tour either. Yeah. All right, quick break. Yeah, mm -hmm. fifteen Sorry. minutes or something. Get Sounds back to it. it. I'll load up the next one. Question? Yeah, come on, come on. One Sorry. more. One more. Go on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm back. No, hey, uh, my name's Cameron. Um, hey, Cameron. I was just uh, asking, leading on from that question, um, and I remember you saying about Caracal, you made like 200 songs or something, I remember you saying, and, and uh, it's you energy. That's for energy. Yeah. Energy, yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah. And it, you end up scrapping however many yeah. to, to boil it down to a, an album sort of length. Mm. Yeah. How do you go through the process of deciding what you want? on the album mm -hmm. and like how long you want it to be is mm -hmm. it is there any sort of restriction from commercial yeah. side or it changes every album i think like i one i would not recommend that technique of like write 200 and pick 10 because it's just soul destroying like it was horrible like we had some really good sessions and we wrote some tunes we really liked but when you're in that process, everything you write feels like, well, this probably won't make it. Like statistically, this is unlikely to make the album. Like, so it's, I don't know, it feels like you devalue the song before you've even written it, because it's one of 200, you know? Whereas with an album like this, I think there were barely any, like, there were a lot of initial ideas that got scrapped. So there were probably 200 ideas for this album, but they were all just like a chord sequence or a bass line or a lyric. Um, you Probably. don't develop them all. Whereas for energy, we developed all of them. <laughs> and it was like tiring, yeah. you know? So for that one, it was really hard and we needed help. And like our managers and our friends would be like, we think these ones are the best. And you just kind of take a vote. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this one, it was like, we just had the songs and we knew it was done. Um, it felt a lot more, it was all just more from feeling this one, everything about it. Uh, you think there's another way of deciding? Mm, I mean, the 200 songs thing, as a songwriter, that is destroying. But mm. I mean, it was good practice for me because, like, I'm just learning and getting better at mixing every idea, whether or not they're coming out or not. So it wasn't, it wasn't that destroying for me. Mm. Um, I, I think what's interesting about energy is like w we did. You could feel it because the songs that e even you guys could feel it. The songs that did the best off that album are like Tondo and Marley Marley. Like their edits, kind of, and samples and really big club tunes. Um, which was interesting because for us, when, after we were all said and done, we're like, obviously, like Khalees being on the record is a huge deal, and blah blah blah, all these other features and songs were written, and yet the ones that connected were uh, were not those, and so mm. that just says a lot about just where we were in those years, like how we were feeling in those years, you know. I was like uninspired. Yeah, I was like by definition writing uninspired. anyway uninspired yeah. Yeah. it's like let's do an album because we're supposed to i'll just kind of keep churning out musical ideas and it felt bad it felt really bad like it wasn't like that sellout i wasn't like oh let's write tunes and try and make hits it was still like 
if we're going to do it, let's do it really well. Yeah. But it, yeah, I didn't want to be writing, and that's the difference with this album. Is like I, I mean, I wanted to write, but it was like I had to write. Like it yeah. was more like I needed to do it. It was like a process that wanted to come out of me. And that other one, energy, felt like an extraction. It was like, hey, we need yeah. an album, so mine yourself for ideas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like, don't it, do that. It is. It is still something to be proud of. Yeah, no, I, I think we made a good record considering how horrible it felt to make. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it more, yeah, personally. Yeah. I, I'm, I love some of those tunes. And yeah, it's it's such a different dynamic mm -hmm. depending on your role in the band, you know. So there any sometimes you have to dig away at it. Go on. Sorry, are there any songs you regret not adding to projects or... Mm. Not adding? Uh, nah, I don't know if there is, probably forgot about them as well just forget quite quickly yeah. there's there are like quite a few tunes that i'm like oh, i wish that came out but it didn't fit you there's know, early like really early stuff where we, we just couldn't clear the sample or something like that mm -hmm. you know that maybe never got like a full really i think someone posted uh blue you in the discord like yesterday that yeah you know that's like a huge jodeci sample we had no money at the time to clear that even if you do, it doesn't guarantee it's going to happen. So those tunes, mm. only a certain amount of people would ever hear because they're just never going to end up. Mm. But as you know, a good example radio. is the the one we'll play later, the demo of uh, that shit, Love, Love, I don't know what it's called. But but why we live in love? Oh, yeah, the one that's in the elevator. Yeah, so yeah. there's like a tune that I made a demo of and then Guy used it as an interlude in the album. Non-stop. Yeah, <laughs> don't play it now. But um, that's it, really George michael -y It's the well. most George Michael thing I've um, ever heard from But me. it's like, it, and it's a very rough sketch of a tune. You know, like I didn't try and finish it in any way. It was like, here's a verse idea, here's a chorus idea, whatever. And then it, you couldn't put it on the record. You'll understand when you hear it, but like it just doesn't really fit on the album. Like it's a bit too funky and disco-y to be on like this record. But I would love to finish it one day and put it out. Well, as as but it is, just, just in, in that some style. Form. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, maybe. in some form. That's what yeah. I, I mean. That's what I would say is, if you are ever lost with an idea, put it away for years. Let come your taste develop it. and change like completely, and then come back and remake it in a new genre. That can sometimes help. I've been doing that this week with mm. tunes I made in mm. 2017. Um, because yeah, I've cool. just everything's got faster. I've got better. I'm like, let's try again. Maybe mm. I'll just be able to make these samples like work this time. Let's mm -hmm. try it out. Same with melodies. Yeah. You know? There's like always a melody going around in my head that I like haven't yet fit into a song and I like try it in songs and it's like it doesn't really fit. I'll try it another time. And there's one yeah. in this on like talk on the phone that I've had for like ten years. Oh like, my god. Finally yeah. it fit. <laughs> it's like thank fuck for that. But uh yeah, gotta hold on to stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Quick break. Sick. All right, CM fifteen or something.